tickets for you. Our good friend Jeff Howe, Horns 24-7, joins us now. And, Jeff, I know that, you know, the story since 2005 has been turning it into something, but uh, I would say that today, did the Longhorns get any bad news? I mean, uh, Tony Grimes is transferring there. They seem to have gotten pretty much almost everybody they wanted today. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the big surprise, and not really surprise, Paul, because Texas had been recruiting Gavin Holmes at the corner from Lake Forest. Uh, he visited this last weekend. I think that was a matter of time. I, I didn't expect it to happen this quick, but uh, getting him was nice. Uh, they get Cecilia Kana, the, the edge defender, who played his high school ball in Utah. He's from Hawaii. Uh, they get him uh, today. Uh, a cl- really close battle with Oklahoma, and they seemed like he was trending toward Oklahoma for a really long time. Uh, and, and Texas was able to get him at the end. I don't think there's any bit of bad. And I think the other big one today was Derek Williams, the safety out of Louisiana. There was some debate. Uh, was he going to sign early? Was he going to wait until February and take some visits in January? But he signed today. The only downer was uh, DeAndre Moore, the four-star wide receiver out of St. John Bosco in California. Uh, all signs looked like he was going to not sign with Louisville and sign with Texas, but he didn't sign anywhere today. So uh, when, when that's, the, you know, that's the, the worst thing that happened to you on signing day, uh, yeah, Texas, Texas had a pretty good day. So, Jeff, after all of the, the buzz and the buildup and the talk and all that, and there's still plenty of that more to come, what's it like to see Arch Manning officially, you know, putting pen to paper? Yeah, it's interesting, uh, Craig, just to get to hear Sark finally talk about it today. We just wrapped up the, the press conference about 25, 30 minutes ago. And just to hear him talk about, you know, hey, if you take away the name, uh, he's still an elite quarterback prospect with elite tools, elite work ethic, that, that family, they're just great people. So, uh, you know, it, it's it's not, Craig, the surreal moment that it was when he committed. Mm-hmm. Uh, and not that it was a surprise that he picked Texas, but even Sark said it in the press conference today, uh, made the decision a little earlier than even the staff was planning. But Sark kind of joked, hey, we took the commitment anyway. I'm not like you're going to tell Arch Manning no. Uh, but no, it's it, it now now the focus quickly turns to it. Sark got asked a couple questions about it. Uh, this Arch red shirt, uh, what, does, what does this mean for Malik Murphy? Uh, how does the quarterback room look going forward? So, uh, really, Craig, this was kind of the, the last step in that process, and I think already uh, Texas fans are just kind of looking forward to, to what's next for, for Arch and for this quarterback room going forward when he gets here in a couple of weeks. So, I mean, we, we got the news, I guess it was yesterday, about a Jay Hall, and then that's a, a transfer that didn't work out for them. But, um, you know, that B. John Robinson's leaving. How, how quickly do they expect some of the kids from this class to start to con- contribute because of some of the losses they will have, particularly on the offensive side of the ball? Well, the good thing, Paul, is that I think 13 of these guys are mid-year guys. But Cedric Baxter, running back, is going to be one of those guys uh, that will be on campus in January, so he'll have a chance to go through spring ball uh, and get some things done. Yeah, I think what's interesting, too, the Sarge mentioned this, and then you can really look at it, the linebacker position, you know, whether it's Anthony Hill, you know, Samadji Varela to North Crowley, uh, Darion Gillette out of, out of Tig, uh, you know, the, the linebacker class that they had, and Leon LaFowle out of the state of Hawaii. I think all four of those guys can come in and, and play right away. You know, when you talk about offense ball, I think Jonte Cook and Ryan Niblett are definitely going to have a chance to come in and compete for playing time right away just because, you know, the depth isn't quite what they would like it to be. Um, you know, like you said, a Jai Hall didn't really get anything out of a Jai Hall. Uh, you know, Tariq Milton was uh, – they didn't really need Tariq Milton. He was kind of an insurance policy for Jordan Whittington, and Whittington stayed healthy the whole year. And by the way, Whittington still has a decision to make on whether he's going to come back next year, and then you just got a whole – host of young guys, whether it's Brennan Thompson and Savion Red, or Casey King was a registered freshman this year. So um, I think wide receiver, running back are really the two positions where you're, you're going to see a couple of freshmen on offense have a chance to make an impact. And I think if you're a if you're a back seven defender, a linebacker, safety corner, nickel uh, in this class, you're going to have a chance to, to come in and compete for a depth chart spot. So, Jeff, just I mean, hearing you mention some of the, the depth that they have, uh, the, the signing class, how highly heralded it is. I mean, you know, yes, they're losing guys like Bijan to the NFL, but that'll come in handy and as far as, you know, recruiting and all of the buzz they'll get from, you know, his buildup into being a first round pick here in a few months. But just how good, are, you know, and I know you got to be kind of careful because things can change quickly, but how well are they set up and how good do, do people feel about the direction that Sark's got this program at the moment? Yeah, Craig, I, I have talked about that today because I, I went back and was just kind of calling through the archives uh, while I was uh, late up with COVID because really there was nothing else to do except kind of cult and stuff and, <laughs> and kind of go rabbit hole. Uh, but, but I went back to a comment Stark made 
the week of the Louisiana game last year. So it's five days before his first game. And he was talking about the roster. He said, it's a talented roster. He said, is it, is it built the way I would build it? No, but that's okay. That just means you've got to go recruit. And, and I think what they've done, Craig, is they've really stacked two classes now on top of each other that makes sense. And when I say that, you know, last year it was all about the line of scrimmage. They talked a lot about they didn't like their, their size, their depth on either line of scrimmage, and they loaded up on, on high school offensive linemen and high school defensive linemen. Uh, this year, it was about being more deliberate at the skill position uh, in terms of, you know, they didn't like their depth at linebacker. They didn't like their depth at wide receiver. They knew they needed to add a body at running back. They went to the state of Louisiana and got a kid in Derrick Williams who Sark thinks is, is the best defensive player in that state. And he said the first time he popped the film on, he thought that kid had a chance to be a first-round draft pick down the road. So I think that's that's where that's where it's accurate. I think Texas fans, they kind of see the, the method to the madness, so to say. When Sark talked about, hey, we want to be a great developmental program and we want to build this roster the right way, I think we kind of laying that foundation with, with the offensive and defensive line classes last year. Now you stack it on top of, guys that are proven commodities at the high school level, uh, not just guys that are good athletes, but guys that were won state championships that played in high leverage games that were really productive players. Now you add that on top of what you did last year, and now you can really see this roster starting to come together. Like, I, I think in the day and age of the portal – uh, and, and one-time transfer, you're always going to have, you're constantly going to need to be replenishing your roster. And, and now for college staffs, you really do look at, it is a year-to-year proposition, almost like an NFL uh, front office would look at, a, at building a roster. But I think for, for now, compared to when Sark got here to where it is now, uh, I think this roster has this program in much better condition to compete, not just down the road, but but in the immediate future with, with the pieces they've added and how they've added. Jeff, they've got, Two guys from the portal right now. How how deep do you expect him to go in this season? Yeah, Sark said that realistically, maybe three or four more. Um, I think wide receiver is a position where they could look to, to add a body. Um, you know, maybe you know, I think on the offensive line and then the defensive line, you're always looking for hey, if there's an impact player that that just falls in your lap. And I would throw you know, Texas classifies the edge guys as outside linebackers, but I would throw edge in there too. You know, if there's just a kind of a best player available, um, you know, you, you kind of got to get him. Guys that can protect the quarterback and get after the quarterback, that's, that's what you're always looking for. And they answer the need at corner with Gavin Holmes. I, I think safety is, is a position where maybe they, they look to add a guy again. If it's like that. But that, that's the key, though. Um, and I, I, I start today about, you know, with these two uncapped years where the NCAA waived the initial counter limit, uh, you know, he said, hey, they just weren't going to take a bunch of guys to take them and then figure it out later. Uh, they've set it up this way to where they really wanted the early signing period to be about taking care of your high school guys and knowing that you're not only going to have attrition between now and when the portal closes in January, but then after spring ball, you're going to have attrition. Now you can really be deliberate and really be choosy and say, okay, post spring, we know we're going to have a need. We need to go get a receiver. Let's go ahead and start looking at the transfer portal for receivers so that way you can be ready to go when those guys enter. So uh, I think that's kind of their plan is just three to four more. I think, you know, like I said, I think receiver, um, maybe offensive or defensive line, I mean, safety. And I wouldn't be surprised if maybe corner was a position uh, that they looked at in the portal too. Of the uh, four or five stars, I mean, we know Arch isn't going to like come in and start right away, but uh, of Anthony Hill, Cedric Baxter, and John Tay Cook, who do you think has the biggest impact the quickest? I think Cedric Baxter is going to have a chance to be that guy, Craig. I mean, Jonathan Brooks, though, is, is, he's getting a lot of opportunities now in bowl practices with, uh, you know, Bijan B. John Robinson already announcing that he's opting out of the bowl game. And then Roshan Johnson hasn't announced anything, but you know, we're expecting him to, to announce that he's not going to play in the bowl game. So it's been a lot of Jonathan Brooks in bowl practices. But Cedric Baxter, uh, you know, Sark even talked about it today, he's just a big physical runner with, with straight line speed that they really like. Uh, so he's going to have obviously have a chance to come and play. I think Anthony Hill too. I mean, I know you know off ball linebacker is one of those positions, and it's really tough to find those guys that play it at the high school level to where the skill set and, and the speed can translate and the instinctiveness can translate to the college level. Uh, typically, you know, you're looking at like converting safeties or you convert a nickel guy or a high school running back. Um, but they got a guy in Anthony Hill that could come in and compete for a starting spot right away. I mean, you think about. You know, Texas had guys, you know, Malik Jefferson was one of those guys that came in and played right away. I think Anthony Hill uh, is that type of guy. And then like the Jonte Cook, Jonte Cook's got a chance to put himself in the receiver rotation right off the bat. You know, outside of Xavier Worthy and, and Jordan Williamson, if he comes back, 
Um, you don't have that many proven commodities. You're going to get Isaiah Mayer back at some point from the knee injury. But other than that, it, it's wide open for, for other spots in that, uh, in that wide receiver rotation. Jeff, uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask. I know this is not football related, but have you guys heard anything about Chris Beard and what the timetable is there? No, Paul, it's uh, mom is the word right now. So I think uh, things are just kind of going through a process right now. And yeah, not, not much movement. I, would, I wouldn't expect a resolution uh, anytime soon. So anybody that's kind of sitting on pins and needles or holding their breath waiting for, for something to go down, I, w- I would exhale and, and, and just be patient on that. That, that could take a while to play out. How much of a, of a, I mean, obviously a surprise, I think that goes without saying, but just how kind of, I don't even know what the right word is, just gobsmacked were, were people once that news hit. I mean, it seemed, you know, again, I, I was I was sick the day it happened, but, uh, you know, it almost felt like a fever dream. Like, is this, was this real? Like, is this, is this legit? Um, and then, you know, you do the legwork and find out that it is. I, you know, obviously that situation is unsavory and, and there's no way to sugarcoat that. It's not a good look, but the people that I think about in that deal are the people that had no direct involvement in it. that are now impacted. You talk about the assistant coaches, the players, support staff, video people, trainers, equipment guys, uh, people that put their faith in Chris Beard that now rightfully so don't know what their future is at Texas. It's just uncertain right now. So um, yeah, Craig, it's just, yeah, to go from Saturday where you have a game against Pine Bluff and it's a, you know, a routine win to, you know, less than 48 hours later, uh, not knowing if your basketball coach is going to be your basketball coach. Oh, and by the way, you had to turn around and play a game that night. Yeah, it was just, uh, it was one of the more bizarre days I've had, uh, covered Texas and trust me in the last, in the last 10 or so years, there's, there's been a lot of bizarre days. <laughs> Jeff Howell, Horns247.com. Jeff, glad you're on the mend. Yeah, yeah. glad you're, you're covering, hopefully, from COVID. It's, we've all had it at this point, but uh, it's, it's not fun. No, no, it wasn't. It wasn't I don't recommend it uh, for a weight loss plan or anything else. But, yeah, it's good, good to uh, – actually, you know, the worst part was I, I lost my voice for a couple of days, so I apologize if I still sound a little bit raspy, still trying to get the voice back. But yeah, no, uh, feeling better, and, uh, yeah. So always good to talk to you guys. All right. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, happy holidays. Merry Christmas uh, to you as well. All right. So, uh, yeah, Jeff, 